Hey guys, it's Matt with My Designs here. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up templates with active variables in My Designs. So let's get started. I'm on the dashboard of the My Designs website here. Uh, what we want to do is navigate to the listings tab under the left side menu here. Now that we're here, what we want to do is create a collection if we don't already have one created. Um, I'm going to be using this Camping 2022 co uh, collection, but if you don't have one created, you can just click the plus button and you can decide where to nest it and um, which template to install. For this one, I'll just show you guys an, as an example. There's Nest Under. Uh, the template that I'm going to be using is Etsy Digital. Um, and then I named the collection Camping 2022. So once it's created, the way to get into it is just by coming up here right under listings, as you can see, clicking it and then clicking the collection that we'd like to go into. Uh, next, we want to upload some designs. Uh, there's two ways we can do that. We can drag and drop or we can click here and then open the files that we'd like. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop three camping designs in here. Um, once they're here, we can preview them. Uh, if everything looks good as it does, we just click upload designs. And then you see the check mark here showing that it's done. Um, and as you can see now, we've got these three de designs inside of this collection. The first thing that I'd like to show you guys is how you set up your active and your static variables. So when you're setting up a static variable, it would be, for example, if I was to go into edit here, um, you know, my title will start with and add to front. Um, and then I add a variable down here at the bottom. If I was to add that and you see these brackets and it says variable one, um, that is a static variable. And what that means is that this is not going to change. So let's say that we pulled the application, the file details and the file name, and we get our preview down here, camp pair don't care. That's what that design's named. So it's pulling the file name. Um, that would be a static variable um, that won't change when we add it. It will just be what it is. Um, next, an active variable, we would actually do like this. So we would do it in, or excuse me, in these brackets here. And the way that we set it up is we list, first of all, whatever it's, um, whatever tab it's under. So we have keywords, inventory and pricing and listing. So let's say that we were trying to set up an active variable under keywords. The way that we would do that is we would go keywords. Um, th this is what we're using. And then we would do a period to separate it. And then if I was to click in keywords on this listing, all of these are the same. You'll see there's primary keyword and secondary keyword. So the next thing I would do here is whatever active variable I wanted to pull, I would just use the name here. So keywords, like I said, and then dot, let's say we're doing primary keyword. We would go primary keyword just at like as it is there's a space here so we put a space there as well and then we close the bracket so now that is an active variable what that means is this now becomes linked with this field so anything that I put um, type in this field will automatically update as you can see it says empty here now when I click out of it um, that's because there's nothing in the primary keyword field so now on under this listing if I was to go into the primary keyword and let's just say I said camping or something like that and I placed it here um, I do believe I have to click save changes and then I go back to listing now you can see that that updated to camping um, so you know I'll just type some random stuff in here um, save changes once again so that you can see every time I do that it updates um, so that's the power of an active variable right there. Um, and that's what I'm going to be showing you guys first. I just wanted to give you an example of how it was done if you were to just manually type it out. So next, I'd like to show you how to apply these variables to templates. Um, so in the top right corner here, you can see edit template. That's where we want to go. We'll click into this and then under title here, I'm just going to copy paste uh, to save time since I've already shown you guys how to do the keywords. Um, I have some data already set up here that I'll copy and paste. Um, and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm clicked into it. So you can see this says keywords dot primary keyword. Once again, that's going to pull the primary keyword from the keywords field. And then we've got keywords dot niches. Um, that's going to pull from the keywords and then the niches field. Um, and then it says SVG, PNG, JPEG, basically the file types that we'll be selling. Um, and then it says vector, clip art, and instant download. And those are some things that people might search for if they were uh, looking for some digital files. 
Um, next, I'm going to copy paste a description that I have here um, that also has some of the variables in them. Um, the same thing if I was to click in, we've got the primary keyword, the niches, and then those are used a couple different times throughout the description. Um, and this also just gives them um, an overview of what they're getting and how to get it, etc. Um, so now when we have this data in here, what we want to do is click save changes and then we want to update the template and the designs so that it applies it to everything. So now you can see all of the designs inside of this collection just inherited that data when we edit the template. Um, the reason that this is so powerful is we can set up collections with this data and with these variables and then later on when we get some designs that are you know in the same niche that you know for example if they were in the camping niche we could just um, upload those designs to this collection and those designs would automatically inherit all of this data as well. Um, so it's really, really powerful if it's set up and used correct. Um, next, we, I want to go actually populate the data so that you can see um, what it looks like. Um, this first example, I'm going to edit the template again and just add under keywords, you'll see niches here. Uh, the niche is camping. So I'm going to go ahead and just save changes on that and update the template so you can see what it looks like. So now you can see everywhere we had keywords.niches, it updated and put camping. So like I said, you know, we were up to upload another design, um, it would automatically inherit all of this data. Um, there is another way that we can do this if, if we would like. Um, we have all of the designs selected inside of this collection. Um, I just deselected them so I can show you. Click on this where it shows the amount of designs and then we can select all. And next we wanna go to more actions and then edit. And we're going to be editing the primary keyword field. Um, and we're going to add to front. What we want this primary keyword to be is the name of our file. So I'm gonna add a variable here, and this is where we're using that static variable. And I'm gonna pull from the app, file details, primary, and the file name. So I always name my designs the title of what, or the primary keyword of what I want my design to be. So, you know, this design says camp hair don't care. That's what it's named. Um, so I can pull that information and it gives you a preview here and then obviously these designs below are going to be different but it always previews the top design selected so i'll go ahead and click update three listings so i can show you guys what it does here so now you can see it populated under keywords camp hair don't care and then if we select this next listing it's different always take the scenic route um, so if we go back to listings now you'll see that the title updated where that variable was that active one and it updated under where the description is too, everywhere we had that placed. And like I said, it did it for all of these designs. So now let's go ahead and add a couple more designs to this collection um, so that I can show you guys what it's like when you have the template set up proper. And since we've already got some designs uploaded th to this collection, we'll just click the upload tab here and then we'll drag and drop the three designs, um, three more designs that I'd like to add to this collection. Um, and then click upload designs. And once again, we can see that working there. Um, now that they're in here, as you can see, just like that, it's already populated everything that we had set up in this template. And as you can see, it still shows an empty where the, the primary keyword was on these three new listings. And the reason for that is because I actually bulk edit, I selected those designs and added that variable that way. Had I done it inside of the template, then it would have automatically inherited that as well. I just wanted to show you guys the difference. So all we have to do really is um, clear the, clear all those that we had selected, select the three that we just put into this um, collection, and then we'll once again go to more actions, edit, we're editing the primary keyword, we're adding it to the front, and then once again, we're just gonna add a variable and then pull the file name um, there's our preview again, and then we'll update those three listings. And now you can see just like that, all three of those listings are ready to go. Um, I'm not going to do the tags as I'm not using this video, you know, to show you how to upload. I just wanted to show the difference between active and static variables. And then once again, how to apply those to your template. Um, and that should cover everything for this video. I really hope that it was useful and I hope that you guys can see how powerful that is. Um, make sure that if you did like it, that you comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future My Designs content.